first step in the process is mold making. After the artist brings in a clay or stone carving or some other object that they wish to replicate in bronze, we have to make a mold. The original piece is covered in either silicone rubber, latex, or polyurethane depending on the artist's needs, complexity of the piece, and the scope of the project. Compressed air helps remove air bubbles and spreads the rubber evenly. Once this rubber jacket cures, a plaster or fiberglass mother mold is created over the top to give rigidity to the soft rubber liner. The rubber liner collects the detail and peels off of the sculpture, yielding a beautiful wax that should be nearly identical to the original. Once the wax is removed from the mold, it is checked very carefully for imperfections. The imperfections are usually in the form of small bubbles or a seam line that's still apparent. A seam line is the seam in the mold where the mold closes upon itself and that allows us to get the wax out of the mold. The bubbles are filled with a paste wax and the seam line is retooled with a variety of different tools that we use. Many of them are dental picks or small knives or tools that are very much like what the artist sculpted the original from in the first place. The wax is examined very carefully. Every millimeter of the surface is checked for imperfections. Once it is a faithful representation of the artist's original concept, it is ready to be prepared for the dip room. The dip room will allow us to coat the wax with a slurry, which is a heavy liquid. The liquid needs to be able to flow inside as well as outside of the wax to create a hollow cast bronze. You might be surprised to find that most bronzes that you look at that are of any size at all are hollow. The reason for this is bronze is very heavy and costly. If it gets much bigger than something that could fit in the palm of your hand, it usually has to be cast hollow. The usual wall thickness of a wax is right around a quarter of an inch. And to allow the slurry in the dip room to flow inside, a window usually needs to be cut into the wax. This can be welded back in later. Small waxes are grouped together on a tree for ease in handling and production. This is both safer for the casting and easier for those that work in the foundry. The finished waxes are dipped into a water-based slurry and then covered with sand. The sand sticks to the wet surface of the pattern. Much like if you go swimming at the beach and roll around in the sand, you'll be covered with sand. This process is repeated until a thick layer is built up on the waxes to create a one-time use shell. Usually the shell thickness varies between 3 8 and a half an inch, depending on the size of the casting and the pressure of the bronze that will be poured inside. This shell can only be used one time because it has to be broken off of the surface of the bronze. This is why the term lost wax exists. You lose the wax pattern and eventually you also lose the ceramic shell mold. This process must be repeated for each and every casting in the addition of a bronze sculpture. It's tedious and there are many steps that must be followed perfectly for the desired outcome, but it produces an unparalleled level of quality and detail. In the dip room, the process requires a drying between coats. 
the shell must be absolutely dry before the next coat goes on. This makes it kind of a slow process. If the shell isn't completely dry between coats, it simply takes longer to do this process. And if the shell goes into the burnout furnace with any moisture in it, it will crack or explode. A quality, strong shell is absolutely vital to getting a quality bronze cast. Once the slurry is completely dry and a thick enough coat has been built up over the wax pattern, it is placed into a furnace for burnout, which has been preheated to 1000 degrees. This requires the burnout operator to wear a special suit that protects him from the heat. This is so that the shell is properly fired for maximum strength and all of the wax and carbon is burnt out of the shell for clean casting results. Bronze ingots are put into a crucible and melted. Once bronze melts, the imperfections or impurities float to the surface and are removed. The shells are removed from the furnace where they are about the same temperature as the bronze which will be poured inside of them. The bronze is poured into the empty cavity left inside the shell by the wax which was burned out of it, taking on the same exact shape that the wax left behind. This process is really quite complicated. It requires a lot of work to orchestrate the temperature of both the shell and the bronze, the flow rate, the order of pouring, and safety. After about 20 minutes of cooling, the bronze is solid and the shell can be chipped off and thrown away. Many people ask, can't the shell be recycled? Well, unfortunately, it can't. Once it has been fired, it is vitrified and can no longer be reconstituted into a slurry to be used again.
bronze casting is then ground and welded and tooled very much like the wax before it. Any rough spots or casting flaws are ground smooth and retooled to look like the original surface. Many times the metal tooler will look at the original to check to make sure their work looks the same. If, if it is a large piece and it is cast in sections, they are welded back together. Where the windows that were cut into the original wax that allow the slurry to flow inside to create hollow bronze are welded back on. Casting in sections allows us to create a very large bronze. There is really no limit to how large a bronze sculpture can be. Casting in sections and welding can produce an enormous piece of art. Once all the metal tooling and finish work is done, the piece is sandblasted and prepped for patina. The final step of the process is the patina. The patina is used to give bronze all the different colors that an artist would want. Basically, patinas simulate what nature does over time to bronze anyway. But nature is indiscriminate. Artists like to use color to accentuate the drama and design of their sculpture. The bronze is heated with a propane torch and then sprayed with a variety of chemicals. The amount of heat used, the spray pattern used, and the chemicals used all are designed to create different effects and colors on the surface of the bronze. Also, the order the chemicals are applied create different effects as well. Some areas are highlighted or polished to draw attention to them. There's an infinite variety of ways a sculpture can be colored and accentuated with patina, and it really is an art form unto itself. In total, the process takes anywhere from two weeks to several months. The scope of the project is many and varying depending on if a person already has a mold or they need a mold made, if they are making a very large piece, and sometimes artists will order several pieces at the same time. No matter what the need of the artist, we are here to help.